A continental shelf is a portion of a continent that is submerged under an area of relatively shallow water known as a shelf sea. Much of the shelves were exposed during glacial periods and interglacial periods. The shelf surrounding an island is known as an insular shelf. The continental margin, between the continental shelf and the abyssal plain, comprises a steep continental slope followed by the flatter continental rise. Sediment from the continent above cascades down the slope and accumulates as a pile of sediment at the base of the slope, called the continental rise. Extending as far as 500 kilometers 310 miles from the slope, it consists of thick sediments deposited by turbidity currents from the shelf and slope. The continental rises gradient is intermediate between the slope and the shelf. Under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, the name continental shelf was given a legal definition as the stretch of the seabed adjacent to the shores of a particular country to which it belongs. Geographical distribution Width of the continental shelf varies considerably, it is not uncommon for an area to have virtually no shelf at all, particularly where the forward edge of an advancing oceanic plate dives beneath continental crust in an offshore subduction zone such as off the coast of Chile or the west coast of Sumatra. The largest shelf, the Siberian Shelf in the Arctic Ocean, stretches to 1,500 kilometers (930 miles) in width. The South China Sea lies over another extensive area of continental shelf, the Sunda Shelf, which joins Borneo, Sumatra, and Java to the Asian mainland. Other familiar bodies of water that overly continental shelves are the North Sea and the Persian Gulf. The average width of continental shelves is about 80 kilometers (50 miles). The depth of the shelf also varies, but is generally limited to water shallower than 150 meters (490 feet). The slope of the shelf is usually quite low, on the order of 0.5 degrees. Vertical relief is also minimal, at less than 20 meters (66 feet). Though the continental shelf is treated as a physiographic province of the ocean, it is not part of the deep ocean basin proper, but the flooded margins of the continent. Passive continental margins such as most of the Atlantic coasts have wide and shallow shelves, made of thick sedimentary wedges derived from long erosion of a neighboring continent. Active continental margins have narrow, relatively steep shelves, due to frequent earthquakes that move sediment to the deep sea. Topography The shelf usually ends at a point of increasing slope, called the shelf break. The sea floor below the break is the continental slope. Below the slope is the continental rise, which finally merges into the deep ocean floor, the abyssal plain. The continental shelf and the slope are part of the continental margin. The shelf area is commonly subdivided into the inner continental shelf, mid-continental shelf, and outer continental shelf, each with their specific geomorphology and marine biology. The character of the shelf changes dramatically at the shelf break, where the continental slope begins. With a few exceptions, the shelf break is located at a remarkably uniform depth of roughly 140 meters (460 feet). This is likely a hallmark of past ice ages, when sea level was lower than it is now. The continental slope is much steeper than the shelf. The average angle is 3 degrees, but it can be as low as 1 degree or as high as 10 degrees. The slope is often cut with submarine canyons. The physical mechanisms involved in forming these canyons were not well understood until the 1960s. Sediments The continental shelves are covered by terrigenous sediments, that is, those derived from erosion of the continents. However, little of the sediment is from current rivers. Some 60 to 70 percent of the sediment on the world's shelves is relic sediment, deposited during the last ice age, when sea level was 100 to 120 meters lower than it is now. Sediments usually become increasingly fine with distance from the coast. Sand is limited to shallow, wave-agitated waters, while silt and clays are deposited in quieter, deep water far offshore. These accumulate 15 to 40 centimeters every millennium, much faster than deep sea pelagic sediments. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Biota. Continental shelves teem with life because of the sunlight available in shallow waters, in contrast to the biotic desert of the ocean's abyssal plain. 
The pelagic water column environment of the continental shelf constitutes the neuritic zone, and the benthic sea floor province of the shelf is the sublittoral zone. Though the shelves are usually fertile, if anoxic conditions prevail during sedimentation, the deposits may over geologic time become sources for fossil fuels. Economic significance The relatively accessible continental shelf is the best understood part of the ocean floor. Most commercial exploitation from the sea, such as metallic ore, non-metallic ore, and hydrocarbon extraction, takes place on the continental shelf. Sovereign rights over their continental shelves up to a depth of 200 meters or to a distance where the depth of waters admitted of resource exploitation were claimed by the marine nations that signed the Convention on the Continental Shelf drawn up by the UN's International Law Commission in 1958. This was partly superseded by the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, which created the 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone, plus continental shelf rights for states with physical continental shelves that extend beyond that distance. The legal definition of a continental shelf differs significantly from the geological definition. UNCLOS states that the shelf extends to the limit of the continental margin, but no less than 200 nautical miles and no more than 350 nanometers from the baseline. Thus inhabited volcanic islands such as the Canaries, which have no actual continental shelf, nonetheless have a legal continental shelf, whereas uninhabitable islands have no shelf. See also Baseline Continental Island Continental Shelf Pump Continental Shelf of Russia Exclusive Economic Zone International Waters Land Bridge Outer Continental Shelf Region of Freshwater Influence Territorial Waters Passive Margin Notes <laughs>